Hello and welcome to Drumcast TV for January 7th, 2010. My name is Darren Mathis. Glad you could tune in. Today I'm going to just go through a process I went through recently to record a demo for a band I'm in called Free On Bond. And so it was a song I wrote and when I talk about the word demo, I just kind of mean a demonstration song to show the members of the band how the different parts go. So I'll kind of walk you through my process along the way. And just to let you know, I'm going to show you some of the equipment I use too, but you can really use, you don't need a lot of uh, expensive equipment to do this. You can actually do it with just a laptop or any computer that has a microphone and you can use free software, recording software out there like Audacity. Anything that allows you to record and listen to what you previously recorded at the same time. Actually, I used to do the same kind of thing uh, back when I was in grade school or high school with just two tape players. Of course, it's a little bit easier now, so I'll show you what I, I do to record a demo. Okay, so here I am in Sonar 8, and that's the program I'm using. It's called a digital audio workstation to record this demo. And I started off the song, as far as writing it, with uh, just a few riffs in mind and kind of a melody for lyrics. So. What I like to do sometimes is just create a MIDI drum track here to play along with in Sonar 8. So that's what I've done here. Sonar has a uh, program that's called a Session Drummer that's built into it. And so you can go in here and, and uh, there it is. Choose, choose some drum pattern. So I just chose a simple drum pattern to play along with because I'd rather record my initial riff ideas to a drum track than just a click track. But I'm not sure how anything's going to go at this point. So drum track sounds like this at this point. Just a simple loop. Okay, and then the next thing I did was record the guitar. So I recorded two guitars here. Uh, guitar with, and I used, plugged right into, and I'll show you this some more later. This is the uh, Alesis Firewire IO26 Firewire interface that uh, I plug microphones in to record everything, guitars, vocals, drums. So each of these uh, channels on here, it's eight channels, corresponds to a microphone that I've got connected to the drums over there. When I record guitar though, I just plug my, if I don't want to play, you know, through my amp and wake up everyone in the house, I can plug right into uh, this combo jack here with a regular guitar plug, a regular guitar uh, cord, and then record straight in here and I can use my headphones so I don't wake everyone up. So I use a guitar rig for for sounds. So for this one I used one guitar sound on pan to the left that was an octave sound and an octave effect that I applied through guitar rig and then on the left or right I used another one and the sound in guitar rig 4 is called God's Love modeled after uh, Steve Vai sound on the song that he recorded called For the Love of God. So I'll show you those two tracks here. And you can see we've got octave guitar and God's Love rhythm guitar. And let's see, that one is God's Love is panned right and the octave guitar is panned left. Don't be able to hear the difference right now though because I'm recording this in mono. So here's me playing the guitars along with that rhythm. Oh, got to unmute them. So I'll unmute those. And by the way, if you download Audacity, which I mentioned earlier is a open source version or an open source digital audio workstation similar to this, a lot of similar feature features in there. So I encourage you to check that out if you're just getting into recording. So let's listen to the guitar and the drums. So that 
that's that. So I figured out how, actually on this, I think I believe, for as far as the structure of the song, I figured out how all the guitars were going to go. And then I kind of pulled in a, a scratch vocal track, I believe, and I'll bring that up here. Vocal one. Got that archived. If you archive something in sonar, it means you're kind of setting it aside and it's not going to take up any more system resources. So it's something to do with your tracks if you're think you're done with them. Obviously I wasn't coming back to it. Uh, so here's me and some tentative uh, scratch vocal ideas. Kind of doubled the track there. And on the track, on the track you can, uh, this is what I really like about sonar, you can do layers. So if you expand this track out you'll see that it's made up of multiple takes where I was kind of making up the words as I went along and the melodies. So you can see within this one track there's multiple layers. Alright, so that was kind of my scratch vocal track. And then I believe I just went ahead and recorded bass. And I could mic up a bass cabinet too, but again, I just went right into the uh, Alesis Firewire interface to record the bass. And Guitar Rig 4 I used as a plug-in through Sonar, and that's a separate program uh, I mentioned before, but it's also got bass sounds. So let's bring in the bass here. Here's our bass track. We'll unmute that and see what that sounds like. If I, if I solo the bass, you can hear it. Turn it up a little bit here. So that's me playing my uh, Steinberger lefty bass I've got hanging over there directly into the Alesis. I actually prefer you know to mic a cabinet but like I said I'd wake up everyone in the house especially if you're doing this early in the morning or late at night people might not appreciate it so that's always a challenge to figure out how you can do things quietly. It's kind of hard with the acoustic drums though I'll get to that later. Okay now after I had all of these tracks, the two guitars, the bass, the MIDI drums, uh, and my vocal scratch track, I was ready to go to the drums. And really, since I'm not going to be probably singing this in my band or playing the drums, I didn't put a, a lot of time and thought into the parts. I mean, other, uh, other, obviously the vocal took a while to come up with, and but. Uh, I mean that's part of being in a band and being flexible, creating a demo and just seeing what kind of other ideas people contribute once you can. And if you can let go of your work a bit to let the creativity of others come in, uh, you're going to find it's a really enjoyable experience. I know it has been for me in the past. So I'm going to sit down at the drums now. Let me show you how I record drums on here. I'm going to actually I actually played along with, I've already done this, but I, already, I played along with the MIDI drums and everything you hear, see here. Let me unmute this, or unsolo that bass. So I'm going to play along with that to the drums. But I'm going to have to add some tracks to record the drums onto. And so, I'll show you how I do that. Obviously, I've already done many projects on here. So what I did, you can either, you know, create a track, insert audio track, and assign it to one of these eight tracks on here. And you can see this corresponds to, I've got the kick drum here, the snare drum here, the hi-hat here, the overhead 
mic on the hi-hat side there, overhead mic on the ride side there, the first rack tom, the highest tom, middle tom, low tom. So you can assign those each. That's what's the, the beautiful thing about this Firewire interface. You can split up your drums. Uh, that, and that's the main purpose I have this for. Uh, so that I can, after recording my drums, go back and tweak each one individually as opposed to recording the entire drum set on one mic at one time. So, you, like I mentioned, you can set up tracks individually for each of those instruments, but you can also insert a track template, and I've just taken, create a track template from another song that I already recorded. So I labeled that Canyon Jump Drums, and when I, the song's name was Canyon Jump. When I insert that, you'll see, fills up with eight tracks there. Each one's already set up from the other song, maintained all the effects, EQ, panning for each of the drums, overhead, hi-hat, snare. See these eight channels correspond to the eight channels on there. And of course I can go back in and tweak them later, but since I'm doing this demo, I want to do it kind of quick. I'm not real concerned about it being, uh, you know, a masterpiece work of art. I just want to get it recorded quick. I use these presets from another song. And, okay, so I think we're all set up. What I would do then is just arm these tracks for recording. Doing this with one hand, otherwise you can do it all at once too, pretty easily. So, once I've got those armed for recording, I'll play the entire song back through my uh, headphones. The old Vic Firth Isolation headphones. And for recording, I would definitely recommend Isolation headphones because they're going to make the sound of the acoustic drums while you're playing them quieter so you can hear what you're playing along to. And for me, that's very important to be able to hear uh, quite loudly, not painfully so, but loud enough the pre-recorded music so I can really lock into it. So I'll roll that footage now of me playing along with this. And again, uh, I know I'm not going to be playing drums. I play guitar in my band Free on Bond, so I'm just going to throw down some initial ideas and whatever comes to me. I haven't really thought out the drum part at all. I kind of leave that to Kevin, our drummer, to kind of finesse the part and put his own signature on it. So here we go.
soldiers, John? Are the soldiers coming? Behold, the Lamb of God. After that, we come back and actually what I would normally do in a case like this is record the audio drum or the real drums, the acoustic drums, then I would probably go back and record everything again on top of it because I usually like to use the acoustic drums as the foundation and then cue everything off of that. But in this case, I'm kind of pressed for time and end up being pretty tight anyway as far as the sound of the uh, of the because it's a pretty rhythmic part there in the guitar so it was pretty easy to lock up with the drums and guitar otherwise uh, sometimes you'll find that it's pretty hard to play along with a pre-recorded guitar track perfectly because then you listen back and they don't match up in my opinion it's a lot easier to play all the instruments on top of the drums but in this case it worked out okay so I'm not going to bother to go back and re-record everything so what I'll do is delete the MIDI drums since we're not going to be needing those and we're left with uh, the vocal, bass, two guitars and the drums that I just recorded eight tracks of drum audio and I'm recording in uh, 44 kilohertz 24 bit audio and so what I ended up doing after that after I had my drum track and that was just a first take it worked out okay there were some rough spots but it doesn't really matter it's a demo and uh, I, what I went back and did was re-record the vocal to kind of cue off the drums a little bit more plus I was feeling more comfortable with the drum part after I had let it sit a day or two so I've got the vocal final here and then in the bridge I was going to do a guitar solo but I just dropped in that dialogue you heard uh, that John the Baptist dialogue in the middle there. So here's the drum tracks. You can also in sonar look at this in uh, console view, which is kind of your more traditional console view with the sliders and everything. It's kind of fun to watch. It's kind of fun to watch the meters go up and down here. So the mix turned out pretty good. I mean, the drums are huge. Uh, I'm not totally secure with my voice, so I pulled that back a bit. And the guitars are massive, like I prefer. And uh, the bass is, well, I, you know, I'm a guitar player who plays bass when he has to. But uh, so the mix, I didn't really mess with it too much. I uh, ran all the tracks here through a bus track, this final, uh, Final this bus here, and I applied this uh, Cakewalk plugin. It's called Boost 11, which kind of compresses it and brings the level up on everything to help compete with some of the modern music you hear these days. You know, over the decades, if I listen to some of the tunes or the tracks that were recorded in the 80s, even if you download them off of iTunes now, uh, they're much quieter and offer more dynamic range than tunes recorded uh, recently. That's just kind of a phenomenon in the recording industry. But this Boost 11 helps somewhat emulate uh, some of that compression you hear these days and gets the level up. So when you come to it on your uh, iPod or whatever, it 
you'll still be able to hear the song in relationship to some of these other more modern songs. So from there, there's an export option. I just export it out of here as a, as an MP3 file and send it to my buddies for their listening pleasure. And I always encourage when we get together for them to come up with their own parts and don't be concerned with, you know, emulating what I did exactly. Because like I said, I kind of threw it together just to get it down before some of these ideas escaped. So anyway, if you want to see more about our band, you can always go to facebook.com forward slash freeonbond. So I hope this session has been educational and entertaining for you. And by the way, if you want to know more about the equipment I'm using or the drums or the uh, mics on the drums, you can go to Drumcast TV, click the about link and it will have a uh, my drums link that also lists some of the recording equipment I've I'm using. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, be sure to visit Drumcast TV. There's a link for a toll-free voicemail number you can call, or there's a uh, email link, or you can go to my Facebook page for Drumcast TV. And it's facebook.com forward slash drumcast. So be sure to check that out. In the meantime, keep practicing, keep recording, and God bless.